Chapter 9 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, The Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 9 The morning sleep weighed down the eyelids of the pajé, like the fair weather mists hang at daybreak over the deep caverns in the mountainside. Martin hesitated, but the sound of his step reached the old man's ear, and startled his decrepit frame. Araquin sleeps, murmured the warrior, slackening his pace. The venerable pajé remained motionless. The pajé slumbers, because Tupin hath turned his face to the earth, and the light hath frightened away the evil spirits of darkness. But sleep sits lightly on the eyes of Araquin, like the smoke of the sapé grass on the top of the serra. If the stranger came to see the pajé, speak. His ears are open. The guest came to tell Araquin that he is about to go forth. The stranger is lord in the wigwam of Araquin. All the roads are open to him. Nay, Tupin guide him to the taba of his race. Calbi and Iracema came up. Calbi has returned, said the Tabajara brave. He brings to Araquin the best of his game. The warrior Calbi is a mighty huntsman of the mountains and the forests. The eyes of his father are proud to dwell upon him. The old man opened his eyes, but they soon closed again. Daughter of Araquin, choose for thy guest the return gift and prepare the moquin for the journey. If the stranger needs a guide, Calbi, the lord of the path, will accompany him. And sleep once more closed his eyes. While Calbi hung up the quarry over the smoke, Iracema took her own white hammock of cotton, fringed with feathers, and folded it into the uru of plaited straw. Martin awaited her at the doorway of the wigwam, and the maiden came to him and said, Warrior that takest away the sleep from Iracema's eyes, take also her hammock. When he sleeps in it, may dreams of Iracema speak with his heart. Thy hammock, maiden of the Tabajaras, shall be my companion in the wilds. Let the cold wind of night blow fiercely. It will protect the stranger with its warm and breathe the sweet perfume of Iracema's bosom. Calbi went forth to see his wigwam, which he had not visited since his return. Iracema departed to prepare provisions for the voyage. There remained in the cabin only the pajé, who was sleeping aloud, and the youth with his sorrows. The sun was setting when Iracema's brother returned from the great wigwam. The day ends sadly, quoth Calbi. The nightshade is already failing. It is time to depart. The virgin laid her hand gently on the hammock of Araquin. He goes, murmured her trembling lips. The pajé stood upright in the midst of the wigwam and lit his calumet. He and the youth exchanged a pipe of farewell. Well go the guest, even as he was welcome to the wigwam of Araquin. The old man walked to the door and puffed forth a cloud of smoke upon the wind. When it had dispersed in thin air, he said, May the Jurupari hide himself, and allow the guest of the pajé to pass unmolested. Araquin returned to his hammock, and slept again. The youth took his arms, which seemed to be heavier than when he had first hung them to the stakes round the wigwam, and prepared to depart. First went Calbi. At some little distance followed the stranger, and directly after him, Iracema. They descended the hill and entered the dark forest. Already the sabia of the wood, sweetest songster of eventide, deep hidden in the thick myrtle brake, warbled the prelude of her plaintive song. The virgin sighed forth, The evening is the sorrow of the sun, the days of Iracema will be long evenings, without a morn, until the shadow of the great night shall fall upon her. The youth turned towards her. 
His lip was silent, but his eyes spoke. One tear coursed down his manly cheek, like the drops which during the summer heat trickle over the scarped rock and disappeared in the dense foliage. The bosom of Araquen's daughter heaved like the overflowing billow fringed with surf, and she sobbed aloud. But in her soul, so dark with sorrow, burned a faint spark which lit up her cheeks. Thus, in the blackness of night, a fire drake glimmers over the white sands of the highland plateau. Stranger, take the last smile of Iracema and fly. The warrior caught her in his arms and placed his lips to her. They were as twin fruits of the Arasa shrub, both sprung from the womb of the same flower. The voice of Kalbi called the stranger by name, and Irasema remained clinging for support to the trunk of a palm. End of chapter 9